All right. So, uh, as you know, we're on the series of Life After Death, and we're on What the Hell series. So it sounds a little funny for me to say that, but that's the series, uh, because we're talking about hell. And can anyone tell me what we learned about last week? Man, my back's already sweating up here. Sheol. Sheol. All right, we learned about that last week. Anybody remember what Sheol Great. is? Sheol is the grave. All right, so we're talking about hell, and we're trying to answer a question. If God is good, how can he send people to hell for eternity to burn and suffer? If he's good, how could he do that? Eternity. No end. Suffer and burn. And so we're trying to answer that question. And we're starting at the very beginning. We started with the Old Testament. And we learned about Sheol, that when you hear hell in the Old Testament, it, they didn't understand it the way we do today. Um, and so we're starting from the beginning and working our way through. Sheol in the Old Testament had to do with the grave. Everybody went. Dogs, humans. Sheol was a place where everybody went. It was, it was the grave, the abode of the dead. Um, and now we're getting into the New Testament. And now we're getting into what Jesus thought on the subject. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, Jesus, uh, I don't know what your guys' view is on what you think he viewed hell as, but a lot of people think that he was like a hippie guy who all he did was love and peace. Nobody's going anywhere. You know, I love everybody. Um, and, you know, no, I wouldn't hurt a fly kind of thing. But Jesus was actually the one who spoke the most about hell. And we're going to try to understand what his view on it is, what it was, and also the writers of the New Testament. But he spoke the most about hell, more than anybody in the New Testament. So, you know, for, for those of us who are struggling with the question, is hell even real, is all these things, um, let's see what Jesus had to say about the subject. And uh, we, we came up with a lot of questions last week. Uh, we uh, Questions about hell for the people who weren't here. These are some of them. And I actually got them for you so you can have them. Kim, if you wouldn't mind, I want you guys to, if you, if you could keep them, that'd be great. And bring them to class every week because we're going to try to answer these as we go. As we, as we go through the classes, we're going to try to answer all these questions. And if you have more... Let us know and we will write them in. I got extra, like, six extra spots. We can write more questions. And if you need a pen, I got those too. Or a pencil. There's some here. All right, but I figure there's, I know that there's a lot of questions about hell. Why? Because none of us have ever been there. And I hope none of us ever will. I hope this class is a waste of time. None of us need to know about it because we're never going to go. But the truth is, is that a lot of people really, a lot of people are really confused about this, and it's damaging their relationship with God because of it. And I hope that if it's damaging our relationship, we can get the true view about it. We can also talk to other people who are struggling, um, because uh, because I do believe God is good, and when you look deeper, you find it that He is. You know, He doesn't have skeletons in His closet. Um, so, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so, Jesus and hell. Um, I'll give this to you after. Alright, so we learned last week that Old Testament, Sheol. Alright, and like I said, ladies, you weren't here, Gimmer, you weren't here, but Sheol meant the grave. Everybody went. What does it mean when they say hell in the New Testament? Alright, and this part's a little tricky. Um... When you hear hell in the New Testament, there could be three different meanings for it. All right, one is Gehenna, one is Hades, and one is Tartarus. All right, and I didn't know any of this. I, I was look, learning all this, like, what the heck? So there's three different words. Let's start first with Gehenna, and I'll just break it down a little. And then we have a, we have a little activity we're going to do together. Um, First one is Gehenna, words used for hell in the, in the New Testament. Um, it was the, the meaning is Valley of Hinnom. 
It was a place to the southwest of Jerusalem. It was called Topeth, um, from an Aramaic word called fireplace. Uh, this is where ki uh, pagan kings would sacrifice their kids, sacrifice people to the gods, like Molech and other things. You'll see it in the Old Testament in Kings. They would set up these big places, and they would worship the gods by sacrificing their kids on these idols. Uh, in one place I was reading that they had this big brass idol, and they would heat it up really hot, and they'd put the baby on it, and they would like just disintegrate him kind of thing. And they would be playing drums so that nobody can hear it scream. you know. And that was a ritual. And that's what they would do in this, the Valley of Hinnom, or Gehenna. Um, so there's some verses if you want to look up you know, at those actual stories of what they would do in that place. Uh, this is probably why the New Testament word can be associated with destruction of, by fire. Uh, it's found in the New Testament 12 times, and uh, in every instance it, it's spoken of by Jesus, it's used of a condition never of a place. So it's used of not actually that particular place, Gehenna, but it's used as the condition, the symptoms or the, the side effects of Gehenna, you know, the stuff that happens there. Uh, it's also said that it was a huge public dump, where they would dump dead bodies, they dump trash, and they would burn it. Um, and you'll see when they refer to it that it talks about smoldering fires, the worm that never dies, all that stuff. But when you read the Bible, it just says hell. And hell is a general term for Sheol, Hades, Gehenna, and Tartarus. So we're trying to l learn, okay, in all these instances, what's, what's different? Because there's a, they're a little different every time you see it. Um, so Gehenna. It was a place outside Jerusalem, and i got a picture for you. Uh, it's a little hard to see. So this is Jerusalem right here. Uh, here's the wall and the outer places. Gehenna is right here. So it's outside the city in the lower part. And it, it didn't, this is what it looks like now. But it didn't look like that 2,000 years ago. Um, this area was the dump. All right? This was the area. So when, when certain kings used to rule, and they didn't obey God, they would set up idols here, and they worship their God, and they'd you know, burn the kids and everything. And then at another time, when, when it was conquered, they turned this place into a dump. And that's when Jesus' time, this place was the dump. And they would throw dead bodies and trash, and it would always be burning. Um, so that's what it looks like there. i got another map, because I was curious. Uh, so this is a little map of Jerusalem, and you read about it in the Bible, but you kind of you never really get a visual picture of it. Um, oh, it's kind of blurry. Here's Gethsemane, uh, the beautiful gate. You know, you see all these things in uh, House of Caiaphas, Pool of Siloam. You know, stuff that yeah, you see in the New Testament come up. But here's the Hinnom Valley, right here, um, and that's where it is, the Valley of Hinnom. So, that's what it's the point that you should get is that it's not in the city, all right? This is the city, it's outside of it because we're going to talk about that in a couple weeks. It's outside the city, all right? So, Gehenna, place burning trash, burning people, always on fire to try to burn people, all right? The next one is Hades, and uh, have you guys ever heard of Hades before? Yep, I've heard of it, Hercules. Alright, so Hades, when the Bible talks about Hades, it usually just says hell. But if you look it up in the Greek, Hades, it's talking about, um, it could be meaning Sheol, but uh, it, it's probably the subterranean of the boat of the dead until the judgment. So it's where people go after they die, before they get judged. And it gets a little tricky too, because it seems like it's divided into two places. That there's a place where the bad people go, and there's a place where the saved people go, while they're waiting to go into eternity. And we're, you know, we're going to talk about that, but it's a, it's, it's a little tricky. But this is some of the definitions that, that uh, the biblical scholars have for it. Um, and we'll read about it in the account of Lazarus and the rich man. How the rich man was in the hell, in the fire burning, and then Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. And he said, give me some water, I'm dying. And so it seems like there's a separation 
in Hades, all right? And if you don't remember, that's what it looks like, Hades. Maybe you've grown up, you saw him. That's not what Hades is, all right? Uh, but in the movies, you see that. And I think the thing we have to think about is that we've seen a lot of movies about all this stuff. Heard a lot of things. A lot of it isn't true. Uh, a lot of it has come from, well, I forget the name now, but somebody wrote a book, uh, Dante's Inferno, I think. Came out a long time ago. And that shaped people's view on hell for the, in the culture. And the last one is Tartaros. This one's crazy. Tartaros. It's mentioned one time in the Bible, right here in 2 Peter, which we're going to look at today. And what is it? It's a deepest abyss of Hades to incarcerate in eternal torment, to cast down to hell. It's, it's believed to be the location for the fallen angels. All right, so you got Gehenna, which Jesus talks about Gehenna a lot. And then you've got Hades, where it's the place of the dead and possibly divided into two areas and maybe three because one's for the demons, one's for just bad people, one's for the people waiting. So again, there's some questions we that arose, but you'll see in Second Peter it's pretty crazy. I never noticed it, but Tartarus. Alright? So those are it. So now I got activity for you guys. I need you last week we were on teams and we came up with some uh, different things, but today I got another one. Uh, I pulled up all the de all the New Testament descriptions of hell, but I'm not going to give you that one because a lot of them there's a lot. Um, what I did was I categorized them best I could into all the verses of hell that talk about a particular subject. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try to describe hell. What do the New Testament What's the New Testament's description of hell? Last week we did Sheol, and we all came to agreement that it's about the grave, Hades. It doesn't say anything about eternal damnation or anything. It doesn't, doesn't allude to that until we get to the New Testament. So, I'm going to give you these, and if you can get in some teams, the goal is read the verses and try to write down what you think the New Testament is describing hell to be. Is it eternal? Is it fire? Is it ice? Is it darkness? Is it a black hole? What does the New Testament say? Any questions? All right. Thoughts? Who? All right, Josiah, you and Kim? Little fire? Uh, okay, for Matthew 10, 28. Uh, uh, did, is that Matthew 10, 28? No, no. Want to read it? No, what did you guys get for the description? What? Unquenchable fire? No, that's for the other one. Okay, what about that, that one, 1028? Or if not, so, if you didn't get that one, that's all right. Somebody else? Gotti has it. Gotti? What'd you do for number one? Almer, but able to destroy both body and cell. All right. Soul, not cell. Uh, destruction of body and soul. And soul. Okay, and then next one, uh, I think Guillermo had it for the next one. Unquenchable fire. Unquenchable fire. Uh, what does that mean, unquenchable fire? Like, uh, I don't have my fun look up the definition. Right. All right, well, pretty much you can't put it out. Always can put it out. All right, so we looked at those verses in Matthew 3, Matthew 18, Matthew 5. Who's talking there? Jesus. All right, these are all Jesus. He's saying, don't, you know, the first one, don't fear him who can just kill the body. Fear the one who can actually kill your soul. And then uh, the next one, he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. If, you're, if your eye starts to cause you to sin, pull it out. It's better that you go into eternal life without an eye than go your whole body go into hell. Um, so quenchable fire. Uh, how about in Mark 9.43, the next one, anybody? Or are those three verses? Matthew 8.12. That's only one verse. 
Mark. Oh, you're right. What'd you get for that one? Never, Just for never dying fire. All right. It's always burning. Never dying fire. Pretty much the same as the other one. They reference acts of sin resulting in being sent to the lake of fire. Uh, say that again. Matthew 18, 9, Matthew 5, 22, and Mark. Yeah. And then 43, acts of sin resulting in being sent to the lake of fire. Never dying fire there. Uh, due to <clears throat> sin. Okay? And again, Jesus. Okay? This is Jesus talking. Um, Matthew 8 and Matthew 13. What you guys get, uh, uh, Eileen and Steve? Okay, uh, it's any, like, literal pain that a person endures, that will make them gnash their teeth. Literal such. pain. And they're going to be in darkness. But... Darkness. All right. That one says into the outer darkness. Outer darkness. All right. Yeah, we'll have to figure out what that means. Outer. Just phrase that as a question. What the heck is that? <clears throat> outer darkness. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Furnace of fire in the places should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it definitely talks about fire. Okay, we had a question up here about ice. Where is it? Uh, Go up. Really oh, it. Go down a little. Yeah. Uh, right there. Right there. Stop. 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 Is it really fire or ice? What do you guys think? Well, if there's different levels, fire. maybe. Maybe. So far, it sounded like fire. <laughs> At least what we've been reading. But who knows? There's different levels. But let's let's keep going. All right. Uh, in the Luke 16, Luke 16, Matthew 8. Anybody? Uh, what about? Uh, let's see. Who hasn't asked Kim? Uh, or you, Josiah is your partner. Um, go ahead, Josiah. What'd you guys get for Luke? Uh, torment, no water, burning. Torment. No rest, no day or night. All right, is torment the same as torture? Mm -mm. So that's something we got to think about. Is hell eternal torture or torment? Because there is a difference. Like, huh? Resulting in no death. Yeah. Is it? Questions? What we're getting from this verse says torment. All right, and that's a parable, which we'll talk about later. Well, it, it could be a parable. Um, all right, torment. Uh, and Revelations, Revelations, torment. This one's uh, this one's pretty crazy. The Revelations one. It says, uh, oh, you know what? No, which one's? Even more crazy. Sorry, Matthew eight twenty nine. We'll probably talk about this one later, but this is the one where the Jesus goes up to the guy, the demon possessed, and he's going to cast them. He casts them into the pigs, but they said, "What are you doing here? Why are you going to torment us before it's time?" And uh, that's what he says. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? So they know they're going to get tormented. And this one might actually correlate with the Second Peter and Tartarus one. Which is, you know, we'll talk about later, but um, Revelations 14 11, and the t smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest nor night who worship the beast in his image, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So, just some things talking about hell. We're, you know, we're trying to understand the description. Body? Um, can you add on the questions if there's going to be a difference? Torment between like regular people and demons. Alright. Like levels of torment? Maybe? Or demons and humans. Alright, you think Hitler's gonna get tortured the same as uh demons? Demons or the same as somebody who who is a good person but doesn't believe in Jesus? Same torture, or is there different levels? I don't know. Everyone's equal. Or everybody's equal, I don't know. Alright, uh, let's go to the next one. Um, did you guys get that Second uh, uh, Peter 2 4? Did you write anything about that one? Anybody get that far? Wait, for Revelations 14 11, it yes. says, who, worsh uh, um, who worship, worship the beast in his image? Yep. Is, it re is it referencing? That there will be worship. Uh, the same. Uh, yeah. So it's referring to worship done. It's what it sounds like. 
Yeah. Because that, yeah, that, that wouldn't really make sense because the beast is also going to be getting tor tormented. You know. um, they're all going. Uh, and then, well, Revelation 14 10 says, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. Yeah, that one's getting me too. So, we've been reading about all the separation. It's kind of like the But then in the presence, is it, it, I don't know, I picture it almost like you can be in the presence, but not from afar. But you can so see. So there's it. still separation there. You can see and it out there. explains happening. why like, Lazarus was able to see. Out. Right, right. And right in this verse, he's talking about Gehenna. He's not talking about Hades. So maybe it's more of a visual relationship than a physical. Yeah, we'll have to look look deeper into that. We'll have to look deeper into that one. But that, at least that's what it's sounding like from just from reading the verse that hell is close to the presence of God. That's what it sounds like from reading it. I, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna go with that yet, but. It's definitely something we should think about. Uh, one thing that we should think about as well mention is that it says forever and ever. All right, that's that's eternal, forever and ever. And that's a question that's going to come up, which I'll show you guys in a bit. Uh, different views on hell. Um, <clears throat> so Second Peter, to anybody? Well, let's just go over the Second Peter two four. For God did not spare the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell or Tartarus. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. All right, this isn't Gehenna and this isn't Hades. This is Tartarus. And what is Tartarus? Tartarus is, it's an abyss. Abyss. It's it's somewhere. It's believed to be a different chamber of Hades, specifically for demons and angels. If God did not spare the angels that sinned, but cast them down to Tartarus and delivered them into chains of darkness reserved for judgment okay so I again this is things I never knew about and I'm just catching now but one thing what would you describe a portion of hell to be for that one anybody chains of darkness chains of darkness that's weird chains of doesn't say chains of steel. Interesting. And then Jude 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Alright, so that could be talking about in, in Enoch's time, in the beginning where it says that angels had relations with women, and God wiped them all out. And it could be that those angels are reserved chains. Um, but again, there's just a lot of speculations on this. Alright, we just got a couple more. Uh, Lake of Fire. Sorry. Revelations 20.14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That was crazy. Death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. So it seems like Hades... And the lake of fire are not the same thing. They're two different things. Death and Hades cast into the fire. This is the second death. All right, so I'm going to put a question on here just to mess us up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> death. Is hell resulting in death? The second death. Hmm. And if anyone's name was not written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Definitely sounds hot. Okay. So the description would be the lake of fire. All right, lake of fire. Because when you read hell in the Bible, it just says hell. It doesn't say Gehenna, Hades, Tartarus. We got to look deeper to find all that. And a couple more because we're going to run out of time. Uh, eternal. And the de devil deceived them that would cast in a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Alright? Eternal. Ever and ever. Okay, and there's a couple more, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go over it with oh, you know, let me just do this last one. 
And these will go, the very last of Matthew 25, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. All right, so eternal punishment. Uh, who's that? Jesus says that. All right, so these are some descriptions of hell. We did not get any of this in the Old Testament. You wouldn't get any of that. But in the New Testament, things get revealed that were never before. And Jesus talks about it. So, destruction of body, unquenchable fire, never dying, literal pain, torment eternal. I got some homework for you guys because I need some help. Next week, I'm going to ask you guys to present uh, one of these views. Just, just a quick one. Because you're going you're gonna to be here today. Next week. Just a quick... Um, there's different views on hell. There's eight different views on hell. All gathered from a lot of the verses we just read. The most popular is probably annihilation. And annihilation, and I gave you a description of what they all are. So annihilation is where... You go into hell and you actually just die. You're not burning and tormenting in a lake of fire forever and ever. And then the other view is that you are, it is eternal. And there's other views on there. There's some views that say that you actually, nobody goes to hell. Everybody goes to a certain place to be purified. And then everybody ends up going to heaven. That's called universalism. You'd be surprised how big that is. There's a huge church. Guy run the the guy who runs it's name is Rob Bell. Where's it at? Mm, I don't know. I'd like to say Seattle, but I don't know. But he's you know he's got the view of universalism to where nobody actually goes to hell. Not nobody. In the whole world, no matter what religion, everybody's going to get a chance to bend the knee and everybody's going to go into eternal life. So there's eight different views. And I want you guys, if you could, next week, just give us a brief description of the view. And we'll just talk a little bit about it. Give us a verse of why they think that's true. Uh, but let's pick them right now so we know. All right, so for next week, guys, if you could give us just a short description of what this is. Give us a couple of verses I wrote down on the bottom. Give us a verse of why, why they think this is actually a valid thing. One of them is thantology, to where they study people that have died and come back to life. And they never, I mean, like, well, they didn't go to hell. What's going on here? So we're trying to understand what hell is. Next week we'll get into the different opinions. Uh, so let's pray. Thank you for coming.